Hey everyone, today we are building a smart recommendation system for a food delivery platform. The kind that suggests combos and menu items based on what you have added to your cart. Similar to how Uber Eats, DoorDash in US or Zomato Swiggy in India work. Now, if you look at how these systems are typically built, especially at companies running AI at scale, you'll often see this pattern. There is an operational database handling user data and transactions, a separate vector database for AI embeddings, maybe a search engine like Elasticsearch, and an analytics database for metrics. Each tool is specialized for its job, which is great, but it also means you are managing multiple systems and keeping them all in sync. So the question becomes, what if you could handle all of this in one system? And more importantly, what if that system was actually built to evolve with your application? Because here is the thing about AI applications. They change constantly. New models come out, you need different embeddings, your data structure shifts. Having a foundation that can adapt as fast as the requirements change, that's what we are going to explore today. We are going to build a recommendation engine that stores and queries user interactions as they happen, performs semantic search using vector embeddings, gives recommendations based on user's interest, and serves results in milliseconds, all from a single database. My goal here is to show you a pattern that might simplify your architecture for certain types of AI applications. Here is what you are going to learn how to actually model data for AI applications. And this is not about throwing JSON at a database. Vector search fundamentals, specifically how HNSW indexes work under the hood. Real-time data patterns without building a complex event-driven architecture. Thanks to MongoDB for sponsoring this video and for giving me the time to dig into their platform properly. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, MongoDB, isn't that just a NoSQL database? And yes, but also, there's a lot more going on here that you might expect. All right, let's build this thing. Before we jump into code, let me walk you through how these systems actually work. Because if terms like vector embeddings and semantic search sound a bit abstract, I want to make them concrete. Let's start with embeddings, because this is the foundation of modern AI search. Say you have these three sentences, I love pizza, Pizza is my favorite food. The weather is nice today. Now, a traditional keyword search would see that first two sentences share the word pizza, but are otherwise completely different. The third sentence shares nothing with either. But embeddings work differently. When you send these sentences to an embedding model like OpenAI's API or Voyage AI, each sentence comes back as a list of numbers. Something like this. Notice how the first two have similar patterns of numbers. The model has learned that these sentences mean similar things, even though they are worded differently. The third sentence about weather has completely different numbers because it's talking about something else entirely. The list of numbers are called vectors, and the process of converting text to vectors is called embedding. The model has been trained on massive amounts of text to understand that I love pizza and pizza is my favorite food are semantically similar. Now here is why this matters. When a user searches for best food recommendations, you can convert that query into a vector and find content with similar vectors, even if the content never used the exact words best, food, or recommendations. You are searching by meaning, not just keywords. But here's the challenge. If you have got a million pieces of content, each with 1536 number vector, how do you quickly find which ones are most similar to your search query? You can't just compare your query against a million vectors one by one. That's too slow. And that's where vector databases come in. Tools like Pinecone and VV8 use clever algorithms. The main one is called HNSW, Hierarchical Navigable Small World. It builds layers of shortcuts so you can navigate to similar vectors in milliseconds instead of checking everything. Then you have got search engines like Elasticsearch. These are for when you want traditional text search, finding documents that contain specific words, handling typos, doing that did you mean suggestion thing, they work completely differently from vector search. They build what's called an inverted index, essentially a giant lookup table where every word points to which documents contain it. Analytics databases like ClickHouse are optimized for questions like, what's the average engagement across all content by category for the last quarter? Across billions of rows. They store data column by column instead of row by row, which makes these aggregations super fast. And finally, you have got your operational database. PostgreSQL, MySQL, or MongoDB. This is your source of truth for day-to-day -day data, such as users, content interactions, and so on and so forth. 
and they are built for handling lots of concurrent reads and writes while keeping everything consistent. All right, I am starting with MongoDB Atlas, their managed cloud service. I'm on the free tier for this demo, which is actually enough for testing and small projects. Now, I have used MongoDB before, mostly for simple CRUD applications, but I hadn't really looked at it for AI workloads. So I am going in with questions. How does vector search actually perform? Can it really replace my specialized tools? And what am I giving up? Let me show you how the data modeling works, because this is where MongoDB is fundamentally different from SQL. In PostgreSQL, I'd have separate tables. Menu items table with dish details, restaurants table, embeddings table storing vectors, orders table, order items junction table. Every query is joining these tables. If you want to show a dish with its embedding for similarity search, that's a join. If you want to find what items are commonly ordered together, multiple joins across order history. MongoDB on the other hand uses documents, basically JSON structures. And the key insight is, you store data how you'll query it. Here's a food item document. Everything about this menu item is in one place. The dish details, its vector embedding for semantic search, its popularity metrics, everything in one document. Now, if you're coming from SQL, your instinct might be, but that's data duplication. What if popularity scores need to update? And that's a valid concern. The answer is, you denormalize strategically. Data that's read together can live together and atomic updates to a single document are fast. But the real power here is about adaptability. AI models and requirements change constantly. Maybe next month you want to add a different type of embedding. Say, a multi-model embedding that combines text and images. Or you need to track new metadata fields for your recommendation algorithm. With this flexible document model, you can add new fields, new types of metadata, or even a different vector embedding dimension without a massive schema migration or operational downtime. You just start writing documents with a new structure. This mirrors how you actually think about the data. It's one logical unit that can evolve as your application evolves. And when your code asks for it, you get everything in one query. No joins, no n plus one problems, no complex migrations when requirements change. Now let me walk you through the actual architecture we are building, because this is where you'll see how all the pieces connect in a real system. At the top, we have our web portal. This is what customers see. Two main interfaces, the menu browsing experience where they can search and explore dishes, and their cart where they are building an order. When a customer interacts with this portal, searching for food, adding items to cart, or placing an order, those requests flow down to our ExpressJS backend server. This is our API layer, and it has three key endpoints that make the magic happen. But before the backend can do AI-powered search and recommendations, it needs embeddings. That's where our Python server comes in. We are running the Gina AI v2 embeddings model locally. It's sitting in cache memory at 127.001.8000 port. This model takes in text, like a ditch description or a search query, and returns a 768 dimension vector that captures the semantic meaning. Why run it locally? Two reasons. It's fast. No network calls to external APIs. And it's free. No per request cost. Now for production, you might use a hosted embedding service. But for this demo, local works great. Now let's look at those three API endpoints. First, API food search. This is semantic search in action. So when someone types spicy noodles in the search bar, here is what happens. The search query goes to our Express backend. Backend sends spicy noodles to the Gina AI model running on our Python server. The model returns the embedding, that 768 number vector representing the semantic meaning of the search. Backend takes that query embedding and runs vector similarity search against MongoDB. MongoDB has a vector index on the food items collection. This uses the HNSW algorithm to quickly find dishes whose embeddings are closest to the query. It returns the menu items ranked by similarity. So you might get Thai curry pasta or Szechuan dan dan noodles, even though they don't contain the exact words spicy noodles. Second, API order train. This is where the system learns. When a customer successfully places an order, Let's say they ordered a burger, fries, and milkshake together. Here is what happens. The order details come into this endpoint. Backend extracts the embeddings of all the items in that order from the food items collection in MongoDB. It calculates the mean embedding, basically averaging these three vectors together to create one vector that represents this combo. That mean embedding gets stored in a separate order embeddings collection. Over time, 
As more customer place orders, you are building up a database of combo patterns. Items that are frequently ordered together will have similar mean embedding stored. Third, API food recommend. This is where recommendation happens. When someone adds item to their cart, say they have added a burger and you want to suggest what else they might want. Backend gets the embedding of the burger from food items collection. It then searches the order embeddings collection for similar combo patterns. MongoDB returns the stored mean embeddings that are closest to the burger's embedding. Our backend unpacks those combos to find which specific items appear in successful orders that included items similar to the burger. It suggests those items. People who ordered the burger also got fries and milkshake. All of this is happening in MongoDB on the right side of our architecture. Two collections working together. Food items collection, which stores individual menu items with their embeddings, prices, descriptions, everything about each dish. Then there is order embeddings collection, which stores the mean embeddings of successful combo orders. This is our learned pattern database. Both collections have vector indexes enabled, which makes the similarity search lightning fast. The beauty of this architecture is that everything is in one system. When an order comes in, you are updating order history, learning combo patterns and making that knowledge immediately available for recommendations. All in the same transaction. No data sync lag, no orchestrating across multiple databases. Now let's talk about vector search because this is where AI applications live or die. Quick primer if you're not deep into AI. When you pass text through an embedding model like the Gina AI model we are using, you get back a vector, in our case, 768 dimensions. This vector captures the semantic meaning of the text. Similar concepts end up close together in this high dimensional space. The challenge is, how do you search through thousands of these vectors efficiently? Brute force comparison is OFN and way too slow for real time food search experience. You need an approximate nearest neighbor ENN algorithm or KNN in our case. Most vector databases use one of a few algorithms. HNSW which stands for hierarchical navigable small world. IVF stands for inverted file index or variance. MongoDB uses HNSW, which is actually the same algorithm Pinecone and VV8 use under the hood. Here is how HNSW works at a conceptual level. Imagine you are building a multi-layer network. The top layer has a few very connected nodes, like major hubs. As you go down layers, you get more nodes but shorter connections. When you search, you start at the top layer, jump to the closest node, then drop down a layer and refine. It's like using a highway system. You take the interstate to get close. All right, now let's talk about the real time aspect because this is where unified data really shows its value. When a customer places an order with multiple items, I need to record that order transaction, extract embeddings of all items in the order, calculate and store the mean embedding representing this combo, update popularity metrics on individual items and make this learning immediately available for future recommendations. In a multi-database architecture, this is where you'd use event-driven patterns. Order goes to Kafka, multiple consumers pick it up, one updates the operational database, another sends embeddings to Pinecone, another updates analytics to ClickHouse, eventually consistent, which is fine, but there is a lag. MongoDB has this feature called chain streams. It's basically a real-time event log of everything happening in your database. This is built on top of the database's replication log. Every write creates an event that you can listen to. It's strongly consistent. By the time you see the event, the data is committed. But here is what I found really useful. You can combine this with transactions. Either all of these operations succeed together or none of them do. That's asset transactions. The same guarantee you get from PostgreSQL, but in a document database. And this was actually surprising to me. I had this outdated notion that MongoDB was eventually consistent and couldn't handle transactional workloads but they added multi-document asset transactions a few years ago, and it's solid. For a food delivery platform, this means when someone places an order with a burger, fries, and a shake, you're learning that combo pattern and making it available for recommendations immediately. So here is what we actually built, a food recommendation system that handles real-time orders, performs semantic search on menu items using AI embeddings, learns which items customer order together, and serves personalized combo suggestions in under 50 milliseconds, all from a single database. If you want to try this, the code repository is linked below. There's a free tier on Atlas that's actually usable. 
The integrations with Langchain, Voyage AI, and the cloud providers make it pretty straightforward to build something real. Let me know what you think. And if you learned something today, let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next one.